Okay, so in this part of the lesson, we are just breaking down um, the thesis statement into its parts and writing topic sentences for each of the parts of your of your essay. So here I have started to do this with my dehumanization essay, and I've ended up with eight body paragraphs and topic sentences for each of those paragraphs. Okay, you're going to keep doing this if you have if you haven't finished this, but I want to show you the next part for those of you who are done. So this is the first part of my outline. I've got the eight different topic sentences for my eight different paragraphs, but I also want to start planning for which evidence I'm going to use in each of these paragraphs. So I've got my topic sentence here. It's about prisoners rarely interacting with free society. They're relegated to spaces that are generally secluded and remote. And I'm going to be looking through my different sources that I have been given um, to see if there is anything that's going to um, help me to make this point. So I'm looking through the Primo Levy packet about dehumanization. And I found, let's see, I think there's something in here about boundaries. Let's see. Oh, I, I found an article called What's Hidden Behind the Walls of America's Prison. And hopefully you have done more reading here. But I think what I want to say here is that, um, let's see, I'm going to use this part that says, sorry, I haven't read these very carefully, so I can't go right here, but let's pretend I'm going to use the section called barriers to access and I'm going to call this. This is in what's hidden behind the walls of America's prisons. Okay, so I'm going to use that evidence in this paragraph and I know I'm going to use that evidence in this paragraph. My argument is going to be central, but I'm going to look to this essay as a way of um, a way of uh proving my own point sorry i lost my train of thought okay so you're now going to go through your outline and you're going to use the different sources that i have given you in class and start filling in the blanks in your outline about which sources you plan to use in which sections of your paper you do not have to use sources outside of the text that i have given you if your whole paper is only relying on these sources that's great but if you feel like oh there's a real hole here that i need to find some research about you can use other sources if you want to, but it just doesn't count as the three sources you're going to be citing for the requirements. Okay, who has questions? Awesome, you'll need to pull out these different packets that I've given you in order to do this, and I'm going to give you like 10 minutes to get started on doing this because this takes a little bit longer. I'm going to do it up here with you. I've already started to plan where I'm going to include my World War II text because that's important.
Okay, I want you to just pause. I want to show you what I did up here. So for all of my points, I have something from the text that are going to back them up. Um, for some of my points, I have two sources that I think are going to be relevant. Some of my points, I just said, oh, this is a concept I want to use here, like this one. And some of my points, I actually have written out the quotation that I think is going to be important to apply. Um, and I've, so right here, I said, oh, I'm just gonna use this book. I'm just gonna use this uh, essay. But here I say, I'm going to use specifically this quotation from this essay. So that's what you're trying to get to. You're trying to say that every one of my points is going to be backed up with some kind of source information. Now that you've started doing this, do you have any questions about this? Okay, raise your hand if you've made some progress. You're making good progress on adding in some sources. Okay, all right. It's kind of a long process. I'm gonna keep giving you, um, you still have like four more minutes to keep working on this and then we'll meet back here again.
Okay. I'm going to show you what to do next, just in case you're, you're done working on this or you've gotten to kind of like as far as you can get right now. So let's start writing a paragraph. Um, I have my outline here and I've, I've kind of set it aside. This is just the way that I like to work. I like to do the outline in the same document as where I'm working just so I can constantly refer back to it. You can do it however you want to do it. But um, I've separated the outline and now I'm ready up here to start my first body paragraph. And I just go down to this outline and I say, okay, this is my topic sentence. I am going to put it right there. In our country, prisoners rarely interact with free society. They are relegated to spaces that are generally secluded and remote. Um, and I have got a source that I'm going to be using to make this point. Okay, but it's the same kind of paragraph structure as you use when you don't have sources. You wanna use the same kind of rule. So the first thing I need to do is explain what I mean by this point. So I'm gonna say something like, um, Okay, I've just explained what I meant by this. I say most of America's prisons are in less populated areas, often areas that are affluent and busy will fight to keep prisons far away from their borders. As a result, prisons, and I need to edit this to not say often so much, but as a result, prisons are often in the middle of the desert or secluded in woody areas far from any civilian homes and businesses. And so now I'm going to use my source to help, um, to help me prove this point. So why don't you guys choose, I would just start with your first body paragraph and start doing this with me as I'm looking for how I want to use this source. So everyone start writing your first body paragraph of this paper. Yeah, she's here. Thanks. Oh, wait, no, she's not. She was.
<laughs> Do you know where you're going now? Okay. Thanks. Okay, I want to show you what I have so far. So we did the first part where I'm explaining what's happening. And then we move on and I'm going to use my source to help back it up. So I say in her essay, what's hidden behind the walls of America's prisons, Heather Ann Thompson points out that we sometimes think of this seclusion as a historical problem. But the closed nature of prisons remains a serious problem in this country. You see how I'm using that integration method of using some quotation and some paraphrase. And then at the end of that, I got it from page three. So I put it here at the end. Okay, here's where I, I have to apologize. When I gave you your packets, I didn't check to make sure that all the information that you would need is on those packets in terms of citing it. But all of them have the websites. And so you can find them online and you can find out who wrote them and where and you know what the article is and so on. Um, this one has page numbers. If it did not have page numbers, I would cite the author instead because it's just a website. So I would put Thompson here at the end. She discusses the fact that because the public does not need, uh, think it needs access to prisons, the public does not see what life on the inside is like for so many Americans. Do you see how I'm not just, I, I could quote just one place, but I've, I've been a little more thorough and I've tried to include multiple quotations to back up this point. All right, and then after that, I'm going to uh, tie the paragraph up. I'm gonna say, um, this creates a system where prisoners and citizens are very, unlikely uh, to ever see each other. There we go. And I'm gonna finish my paragraph that way. That's generally the paragraph format. Um, that's the format I want you to use for quotations. You wanna make sure that most, if not all your paragraphs use evidence to back up each point. Are there any questions at this point? Okay, I'm gonna give you the rest of the class to work. You can work now however you like to work, either add to your outline or start writing. Um, come back here if you have any questions or you want me to read anything over and I can help you.